world had gotten into the peanut butter and had it everywhere. Oh no! <sighs> it's all over the white rug, and I, I just had to run out the door. So. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I hope it was a small amount of peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, well, he he likes his peanut butter. <laughs> he actually, you know, hand right in there. It, it was everywhere, all over his face and everything. So, All right, we should be broadcasting. Uh, for all of you guys listening, welcome. Uh, we will get started in uh, just as soon as I can explain things, since it's time to start anyway. Uh, just for you guys that are new, I know that we have a bunch of new people that have joined our Facebook page. So hopefully we have a bunch of newbies today. Uh, so for, for those of you that are watching for the first time, I'll explain how things work. You should be able to see on your screen the, um, it's, uh, the picture that says Cake Foo Master Series presents Paul Joachim. Uh, you should be able to see below that a picture of Paul and a picture of myself. Hi. <laughs> uh, and then uh, on the on the right side of your screen, there is a tab that says chat on it. If you click on that tab, uh, you can chat amongst yourselves. I, we have a pretty fun little cake group here. So uh, if you guys want to go ahead and say hi, uh, chat, chat amongst yourselves. If you have any technical questions, that's where you will ask, these, uh, ask your technical questions there. We have someone watching that. Uh, then down below your screen, uh, there is an ask a question box. That's where you are going to ask all of the questions that you have for Paul. So make sure that you get all the questions asked. In fact, I, we already have several questions that have already come in before we even started. <laughs> so I think everyone's really excited to, to hear from you, Paul. So That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we will pause for just a second for editing purposes, and then we'll get started. Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Foo Master Series. Uh, welcome to everybody that's new, everybody that's, uh, I wouldn't say old, but that has been here before. <laughs> uh, we're, we're very happy to have you guys here with us and, and uh, hope you guys can get something really, really great from this training because, uh, you know, as long as you're here, you will. I know you will. So today's training is going to be with Paul Joachim. He's super talented, and I got it right this time, right? You did. That was awesome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We've had him on as a, a, a before, and I slaughtered the name. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, it, was per it was impeccable. <laughs> Thank you. Well, welcome, Paul. We're so glad that you're here. Well, thanks for inviting me again. This is great. Awesome. Okay, well, you know what, let's just jump right into it. Uh, we want to talk about you and, and what you do, where you came from, where you're going, and then we'll get into the, the training part. So, Sounds okay. good. All right, so you have been doing cakes for a little while. So Yeah, I've been, I've been sculpting cakes for about six, seven years now. And I've been sculpting life-size cakes for three years. And that's really where my career has been going. It's mainly the life-size cakes and, and busts, for example. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is a, a Here, bust. Let me, let me uh, make you the, the focal screen. Here you, go. Here you go. Isn't that amazing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so this is something that I, uh, I sculpted yesterday on, uh, for a TV segment. Awesome. I, I had like, it was like 30 minutes, probably. Yeah, I didn't do the entire thing there, but I did a, a lot of it there. So when I do these live segments, what I'll do is I'll get the, the base started, and then I'll go ahead and finish it up you know, on camera. And, uh, and this is one of the results of doing that. That's awesome. And we're going to talk a lot about this and what, what you do with this um, throughout, throughout the training, right? Because I'm sure that everybody's going to want to know, you know, what's what's inside of it. How do you, you know, support it? How do you keep it from melting? <laughs> All that kind yeah. of stuff. Okay, cool. So, so great. Um, let's see. You have been married for 14 years, probably coming close to 15, right? Actually, 15 came and passed. So. Oh, came and passed. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, congratulations. Yeah. 15 is a big number. That's that's great. Yeah, thanks. 
Yeah, thank you. So, awesome. Yeah, it was, it was has great. it been that long since we did it, our last training? <laughs> it has been, actually. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and then, yeah, I was going to show you guys. Oh, yeah, and this is your beautiful wife. That's my yeah. wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I've started to accumulate my family. That is so cool. <laughs> so cool. So those are actual chocolate figures, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's solid. It's solid chocolate. Each one weighs about uh, 20 plus pounds, between 20 and 30 pounds. That's amazing. And how do you keep them from, you know, crystallizing or, or whatever? Is there? Well, well, the one I did of my wife is about six months old. Uh -huh. and as you can see, it's holding up great. Awesome. Yeah, so there's some little parts that turn a little bit light brown just from the humidity and it drying out a little bit. But otherwise, they, they really hold up great. It's, it's, it's just modeling chocolate, and the shelf. You know, what's the shelf life on modeling chocolate? It's it's a long time. It's yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. I expect. Yeah, I expected the last years. And, and as a lot of you guys know, it once modeling chocolate's out in the air, it hardens up. Yeah. Mm hmm So it's it's pretty hard. That is so cool. <laughs> now everybody's gonna go and sculpt their family, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> that would be awesome. That's quite. It, it is quite the talent that you have, though, to to be able to get features correct and all of that. So, lots of practice. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. So, what did you do as far as schooling goes? How did you get to be such a, a great sculptor? How did you, you know, did you just start on chocolate? Did you do other things uh, I, first? Let me see. I, I did a little sculpting in college, mainly in clay. Really, it wasn't, it wasn't my emphasis. It was just one of the things that I did. I did a lot of, I actually did more painting. And then I, I after I graduated college, I kind of got out of the art scene. You know, I got married, had a couple kids, started a whole other business, had nothing to do with art. And then we said six years ago, I realized that I could combine my art skills and my passion for food. And that's really where it took off. And I had really been struggling to find my passion on, in terms of art and what to, what to sculpt in. You know, I really never got into clay. I really never got into painting. But once I realized that I could do cake, that's when the light bulb went off. And that's when I realized there was something really special about this. Awesome. And, and now it's evolved into cake and chocolate. A lot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> a lot yeah, of really, chocolate. A lot of chocolate. It's usually uh, chocolate cake. <laughs> Delicious, moist chocolate cake. And now if I'm just sculpting, I usually sculpt in cake and chocolate, but if I'm just sculpting in chocolate, I'll also do chocolate samples like ganache shots or little chocolate cups with ganache with different flavors and different textures. And I really try to kick it up a notch. And I really love giving the audience flavors that they've never tried before. You know, the quality of the chocolate is really high. So mm -hmm. I use Davis chocolate, I've used Calibo, and a lot of people are used to lower end chocolate. So when they have this chocolate, they're, they're amazed. You know, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's delicious. That's awesome. We'll have to have you talk more about uh, adding flavors to your chocolate. That's really cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Okay, and so you've been on Food Network before and done a few uh, TV things. Talk about the, the exposure that you've had. And you even have uh, um, someone that actually you know, does all this for you, lines everything up for you. Well, that's pretty new, yeah, <laughs> on the PR side. So I recently hired a, a PR person, Jeannie Lee, and she's phenomenal. I mean, she's really amazing. So uh, she's opening up new opportunities in terms of the t TV segments and other things that uh, I really wouldn't be able to, well, I could do it myself, but uh, she's got the network and uh, things that I don't do, can't do. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, is, is that something that you feel is, you know, crucial to what you do? Or, you know, if, if somebody wanted to do something similar to what you do, is that something you would recommend? Or, or? I, I, had to, I mean, it's all about exposure and it's all about people knowing who you are and what you do and what your brand is. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, and what I'm doing, real quick, what I'm doing is so new and people don't know that it even exists, you know? Uh, yeah, so that's really exactly it. I, what you do is so unique to what, you know, everybody else does. 
you know, usually it's a, you know, we'll make a cake in our shop, get it all put together, take it to the event, you know, even if it's a sculpted three-dimensional thing, but for you it's more of entertainment than uh, you know, or just as much entertainment as it is. You want to explain to everybody what it is that you do, that, <laughs> okay. that in case, in, just in case they don't know what what it is that you do. It's pretty okay. spectacular. <laughs> the, the, the majority of what I do is live at events and parties. So I'll sculpt a life size piece, a full size life size piece, during a party, or maybe I'll sculpt a a bus out of cake and chocolate. It could be a corporate event, could be a private party could be for a chocolate festival and it's again it's all live in front of an audience and a big part of it is talking to the crowd interacting with the crowd telling them stories so when I plan these things out I have to plan about 50 percent talking 50 percent actually sculpting and it, it took a lot of practice to be able to go back and forth seamlessly between the sculpting and, and the talking and switching roles and having fun and yeah, yeah and that would also, be really hard to do. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took me a couple gigs to just relax and have fun. And, and like, for example, the last couple gigs, I've pulled people out of the crowd and I've helped them, help them, had them help me sculpt. You know, and I, in the beginning, I wouldn't have done that because I took it way too seriously. <laughs> uh huh. Well, that's <laughs> yeah, cool. All about fun. Yeah. That's very cool. All right, so let's get into our our training part for you. Um, I, for those of you that have been with us for a long time, you'll see that these pictures are are very are are probably familiar to you. We had a training uh, a while back, but we didn't get very many people on the training, and it kicked people people out. This was back when we had a different system, and then there wasn't a replay for those that did get kicked out. So. Um, I, I know that there there were not very many people that got to see this, and so we're going to do similar. But Paul has uh, promised for those of you that are that are here with us again, watching the same or watching Paul again, uh, it, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, going to try to mix it up a little bit. There you go. All right. Okay. So this is your yoga cake, which yep. is so cool. <laughs> I've, I've actually been doing yoga for about 11, 12 years. So for me, I've always wanted to do a life-size yoga cake. And when I got this opportunity, it was like, yes, <laughs> you know, th th this is really exciting. It's, it's for a local yoga studio, and this is one of their, their teachers. So, you know, some people say she's lucky, some people say she, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and how, yeah, how long did she have to stand there is the, is the question. Amazing. I mean, really, she was just an amazing athlete to be able to even hold that pose right there for more than just a few seconds. <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> if I could even get into easy. that pose. <laughs> right, yeah, right, exactly. Even just to get into it, let alone hold it. <laughs> you get, she could have hold it for like two minutes or longer. It That's was amazing. amazing. <laughs> so I, I was easy on her. You know, what she, throughout the entire process, she would, she would walk up and she would hold a pose and, and then I'd let her leave and she'd be gone for like 30 minutes and I would sculpt and then she'd come back, hold the pose for 30 seconds or, you know, whatever, and then walk away. Let's say I was working on her hand, I, I wouldn't make her hold the pose. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, would, I would just have her put her hand out. So, awesome. uh, so this is part of the planning process. So I found... Mm -hmm going to sculpt a life-size person, one of the first things to do is to measure everything out. So you really want to measure the length of the, the arms and the legs, really everything. The, the width, the depth, and I write all that down into, in, into a grid. So you, you clearly had to have all of this planned ahead of time so that you could have the, the structure already made before you... Uh, definitely. The, the success of doing these is right here. Is I've got to do a great job with the planning and with the armature and if you do a great job planning everything else is easy. Everything just falls together. Right. All right, so um, you, you, uh, you say you measure everything. Um, that one thing you did share 
was the way that you measure, which is really cool. So we'll go ahead and let you. Yeah, I like using the uh, the Taylor's measuring tape because uh, it's soft. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to really use anything that's metal on a person. You know, I don't think they'd be real happy with you if you like scrape them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to be I try to be nice to the models because you know they're usually really great and do me a favor. <laughs> you know? So when you're when you're making these figures, do you actually measure um, like like everything, like their waist size, their you know yeah, head you, circumference, yeah. all that? I don't really do the circumference, but I do the width. And the height and the shoulders, and what I'm doing. Cake. This one's a little bit more advanced of an armature. A lot of the ones I've done are more upright. And in that case, think of it as a tiered wedding cake. So every, every five inches, I do a board. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure that I measure the width and the height. And then, I, just over the years, I've gotten to where I can kind of draw it in and I know the basic anatomy. But we'll get into a little bit more of that in a, in a bit. Okay. All right. Let's go back to um, to here, and I wanted you to talk about, I guess, um, how how did you get how did you know that this was going to actually stand up? This cake is heavy. <laughs> chocolate is heavy. <laughs> yeah, it, it was about eighty pounds of chocolate, and it was eighty servings of cake. So the whole thing weighed. I think it weighed, ended up weighing about one hundred and ten pounds. Well, the funny thing is it ends up weighing about the same as the actual person. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, but in terms of, of structure, it's, I use PVC pipe. Uh -huh. And the difficult part with this is you want to be able to get the base where her leg is, with the leg that's mounted <laughs> to the ground, with the widest, thickest PVC that we possibly could, could figure out. Uh, the challenge is her ankle. Because her mm -hmm. ankle's narrow, so that was pretty much our, the limitation. Um, the thickness of the PVC was it couldn't be more thick than her ankle. So that's that's what I did. So I, I used PVC. I think it was a, a two-inch PVC, and I wanted extra support right underneath uh, by her thigh, right underneath where the main MDF would was, that's holding up the cake, and I used three or four-inch PVC for that to be able to give it additional support just on that top portion by her thigh. Okay, great. I know it's hard to visualize, but the, there's a slide coming up. That there shows. will be, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Easier. Okay, so this is what I use to actually make those shapes. You remember you were talking about the, uh, the shape of the waist and do I measure that? Yeah. I, the, I use this tool. And this one is an 18-inch one, and I just recently got a 36-inch one, which is amazing. I, I love the 36-inch one because you can go all the way around the person, mm -hmm. and then you can. Then I take that shape and I put it down on a large piece of paper and I sketch it out like uh, a silhouette, and then I cut it out, and then I put it on the MDF and cut out the shape with a jigsaw. Very cool. Okay, so this this uh, tape measure, it's thicker. Does it actually stay? It, this is a flexible, thicker tape measure. It's a it's a ruler. Okay. So it's, and yeah. where do you find? Where did you find this? You get that at Michaels. Okay. At Michaels National Chain. So that's I believe that's where I got this one. The thirty six inch one I found on Amazon. And you could just type in flexible ruler. I think it's also called a uh, graduated ruler, but flexible ruler would, would allow everyone to find that online. Okay, great. Awesome. That's a really nice tool right there. I think you could use that in any kind of 3D sculpting. Not even 3D. I mean, just for basic caking, it's really a cool tool. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's true. That is really true. You could use it for, you know, figuring out the circumference of your cake to, you know, divide it into different portions to decorate and all that kind of stuff. So. And shapes. I mean, really shapes. So you can, it holds its shape when you, when you flex it. Oh, so does it? With gum paste or fondant or anything like that, you could, uh, you could flex that ruler, make it into whatever shape you want. You can put it down, and then you can take your razor blade or whatever you're using and, and cut it out. 
Oh, wow. Okay, so this actually holds its shape. There's like a, it's wired yeah. inside almost. Right, exactly. That's what's so yeah. amazing. Cool. <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> okay, so here's the, the armature that you were talking about. Okay, awesome. So this armature, I, again, it was more advanced than a lot of the other armatures that I've done because she's leaning over. So I really wasn't able to take that ruler and go around her body like I was describing. <laughs> so it took a lot, of, a lot of trial and error and visualization, meaning as an artist, I had to visualize what it was going to look like when it was done. As I was building the, the wood and the engineering the wood. So the, the engineering part and the artist part really merged together in this one to, to be able to pull this one off. It was, it was quite challenging. As you can see the, the wider PVC on the bottom leg. And again, we did that to be able to give it extra support. And then I attached the PVC to the wood using L brackets. And depending on the, the weight, you're talking about the weight, I think we used uh, like five or six inch L brackets. They're huge. I mean, those, those, those are just a giant. So. Uh, and it holds a lot, a lot of weight, a lot. I mean, there's no way we'd be able to uh, put enough weight on that to be able to bend those brackets. And the PVC is sturdy enough, also, because I know, I know that when you're working with a thinner PVC, it's it's pretty flexible. I know the first uh, tall sculpted cake that I ever did, I used a thin PVC, and it was going like this. <laughs> <time>. It was <laughs> scary. <laughs> there's, there's two types of PVC. And one, one is for uh, like water plumbing, mm -hmm. and then, boy, I don't, I'm not a PVC expert, <laughs> but I know if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or your, your hardware store, there's definitely notice that there's two types of PVC, and there's one that's really thin, and I don't use that, because mm -hmm. that's going to be really flexible. It's going to be way too flexible, and this stuff's pretty thick. I mean, you, you would have a real hard time taking it like with your hand and being able to flex it. It's okay. not going to flex, especially the thick stuff, like mm -hmm. the thigh. No, that stuff's heavy duty. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, I can, you know, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Awesome. Okay. And then it, you have to, I mean, if you look at these pictures, you can see that, you know, sideways, yeah, I'm sure that that, that would be difficult enough to get the, the support and everything to go, you know, the way that you need it to be to get her put together correctly anatomically but then you have to think of it the other direction too it has to be you know this picture on the right hand side you have to think about how her arms are going to be and, and, and all of that yeah this isn't for the faint of heart <laughs> it really was hard because again you have to visualize I mean there's really no easy method to be able to just measure her out and boom you got an armature mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah so yeah. I think I met with her three or four times to make adjustments to the armature. Wow. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it was hard. <laughs> it's, there's, there's a lot involved in something like this, I'm sure. Awesome. Okay, so then we have... Let's see. These are okay. some of the tools that you use. I'm going to talk about those. Yeah, in terms of sculpting, and the majority mm -hmm. of it is modeling chocolate. And of course, we've got the cake. The cake went into the whole torso area, and then everything around that was chocolate. And these are the tools that I use to really do everything, all the details, in terms of you know the nose and the mouth, and, and you know little details in the fingers and and that type of thing. So you really don't need a whole lot of tools to be able to accomplish what I'm doing. That's really cool. And do you find these just in your clay section at the store, or what, what kind of tools? Yeah, in this use? case, again, you can buy clay tools at Michael's. Uh, they're not quite the quality of these two. These were at my local uh, art store. Okay. At, I don't know if, uh, I think Sam, Fla I bought them at Sam Flax, and I, I think there's, there are Sam Flax. Pearl Arts and Crafts, that's another national company. I'm sure you could... Uh, you can get them there. But if you've got a local art store, that's what I would definitely do. Buy the real deal clay tools. They're not expensive. Each one of these were like two bucks. Very cool. Yeah. 
All right. So it, it's just amazing to see that just these two little tools are, is about all that you need to, to make something so spectacular. <laughs> Clearly there's artistry involved. <laughs> So, and then this is the, the modeling chocolate that you use, and we're going to talk a bit about that. It is. So what I do when I, when you make these things live, there's really not a whole lot of, uh, of play in terms of not having everything perfect. But what I'll do is I'll make the modeling chocolate in different stages. So you can see on the left, you can see it's kind of shiny, a little bit darker, and that just means it's softer. And then the one in the middle is kind of medium, and it's got a little bit of firmness to it. You can still knead it, and on the, the stuff on the right, it's definitely harder. It's not going to be rock hard because you want to be able to still make it pliable and do what you need. Um, and then I'll time it out in terms of it's pretty difficult because you've got to make adjustments based on the temperature of the venue, and you don't know that until you get there. <laughs> so, I mean, you could ask, but a lot of times they don't know, and sometimes you, you don't have the the ability to go down and check out the venue either beforehand. So you just need to do the best job you can. Um, but I, again, what I'll do is I'll use the soft stuff for the, the different details and I'll use the harder stuff over there on the right for more structural elements, things that need to hold up. Very cool. Okay, so do you have three different recipes for all of this? or I, I don't. I don't, that's a really good question. So to be able to accomplish this, is, it depends on how long the modeling chocolate has been out in the air. And is it in the Ziploc bag? So what I'll do is after I make my modeling chocolate, I'll put it inside the Ziploc bag, and that'll keep it softer longer. And if you take it out of the Ziploc bag and you just put it out into your kitchen or in the open air, it'll start to harden. And putting it in the refrigerator accelerates that process as well. Okay, great. And then, uh, so so you will with the softer one, you would actually put it in a bag, and and let it stay soft. The, right. That that would be that would be the goal. And then the medium one, you would leave out a little bit longer, and then the the stiffer one would be even more. It's a, it's, it's kind of like a, it it varies throughout the entire time that you're sculpting because that one on the left will turn into the one on the right in about an hour. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. so it's constantly timing it and constantly making your modeling chocolate and having it softened. And I usually have a microwave with me and hopefully I'll have an assistant. I, I don't always have an assistant, but having an assistant is amazing. So uh, that assistant can help me get it timed right and they can soften the modeling chocolate perfectly and just watch me and see where I'm at and they kind of know if do I need that soft modeling chocolate and they'll make this they'll make it at that softness and then as I'm working I'll go and I'll start picking from the pile which is the best modeling chocolate to use okay <laughs> right. and does the amount of kneading do you need certain uh, ones ahead of time or you know let some just sit does that affect the consistency it yeah, it definitely does. I mean, if you if you need it, it's going to be softer, and from the warmth from your hand as well, it's going to soften it up. Okay, great. And you have a a line of chocolate that you have worked with with uh, Davis Chocolate. Is that right? Right. That's something that we have been developing. We got together and we created a coverture chocolate, which is. It's straight up chocolate. It doesn't have any junk in it. it. doesn't have any paraffins or anything like that. It's really good quality chocolate. And we created a formula that will hold up outside in the heat. And I've tested it to 90 degrees. So at first I was pretty skeptical. <laughs> I was like, how is this going to work? Because it is just chocolate. I and mean, there's nothing, um, there's no, again, any waxes or anything in it that you would think to allow it to hold up, but it, there's a few things that we took out of your standard chocolate to be able to help it hold up. So as long as it's in the shade, it holds up just impeccably amazing. It's really, it's exciting. That is really something. <laughs> that is really something. So your the Davis chocolate, you can just go and, and do they have on their website a spot for like heat resistant 
chocolate or something like that. I think like right that. now they're working on it. So the best thing to do is if you're interested in trying it out is to go to the website and go ahead and contact them. And, contact them. Okay. Yeah. And then ask for them for the, the heat resistant chocolate and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we, we uh, look forward to hearing more about that once it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, the big thing with that is, uh, I mean, it works amazing. And one of the interesting things that we realized through the process was it's the UV light. It's the direct sun that breaks down the chocolate. Oh, and even really? If, yeah, even if it was cold, even if it was like 56 degrees outside, if it's outside, that UV light breaks it down. So as long as you're in the shade, it works amazing. Cool. That's great. All right, so here we have your work in progress. Okay, so this is a couple hours into it. And again, she wasn't standing there the whole time. <laughs> so we just got a nice uh, photo here. Awesome. Uh, again, in the torso, that's all the cake. And then you can see as I'm, I'm building up that modeling chocolate around the PVC to get that anatomy going. Okay, so you so right there in the torso is the cake. Do you cover it with anything else before you start putting on the modeling chocolate or just just start with the modeling chocolate? Well usually well in terms of the MDF, you've got to separate the MDF from anything that's edible. Yeah. So parchment paper or freezer paper. Okay. I find that like wax paper tends to rip and it doesn't hold up from the moisture. And it's a little bit thin, so mm -hmm. I really like using the freezer paper. Very good. Okay, and then down on you know on the bottom of her, you know, just her like her belly area. That's just oh, okay. that's where the MDF is, and you just start adding the modeling chocolate. Is that? Yeah, I add the modeling chocolate to to the base, and I I use glue, and meaning chocolate glue. <laughs> so chocolate is an amazing glue. You wouldn't think of chocolate and glue, but it, it really is phenomenal. So what I'll do is I'll melt down chocolate at a low temperature and then I'll spread it on the bottom of the MDF and my trick is to take a piece of modeling chocolate and put it in the refrigerator for a little bit or the freezer and then bring it out and press it up underneath and it sets that chocolate glue immediately. Just a lot faster because it's cold. Um, and Right. Ah. Right. So the cold just it, it hardens up the chocolate. I actually did that on Food Network Challenge. I was just gonna say there are so many times where uh, you know us as cake decorators were watching these people trying to put you know Rice Krispie treats or right. you know something up against there and it's all falling down. And <laughs> I, I know just when I watch those shows and they're they're not doing it and I was like it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know yeah I. When I when I did my um, it wasn't Food Network but my show I was lucky enough to just yeah, well not lucky enough but I just had a wedding cake so it was just you know stack it up but right. I think you know I I just I dreaded the idea of having to put together something that I, you know the studio is hot you know and I'm sure that these are you know problems that people don't expect to have. But then, right. you know, if, if you're not equipped with the knowledge that, that you have because you do it so often, you know, I think that's intimidating well, I, to some. <laughs> well, I find it's, again, it goes back to the planning. I mean, that, that's why I did well on Food Network Challenge was I, I plan. I mean, I plan the heck out of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how many hours I spent planning and planning and planning. And Edna De La Cruz and I, we practiced and we made a uh, half of a whole piece beforehand. Wow. And practice, practice, practice. So a lot of that experience was translated into doing these gigs and doing these live performances and again planning and planning and planning and really making sure that there's there's nothing left for in terms of uh, unneeded risk. You want to eliminate all the risk you can possibly imagine so you can just sit and back and have as much fun as possible. Awesome. That's great. Um, so, so um, Armature is coming along nicely. And here's one that's very much closer to done. Right. Yeah, it's done there. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, I got in everything. I got in the, the hands and the feet. 
Awesome. Yeah. And then even down on the bottom, you've got the detail work for the for the base. A, a really great artist friend of mine was working the party as well. She is a um, a body painter, and she paints faces. Like you can see on the model, she painted the model's face. And who's and, who's that? Um, I will send you a link. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll send you a link of uh, of her information. Okay. But, uh, it's great. bombshell. Bombshell. Body art, Shannon Holt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. So she's a phenomenal artist. She's amazing, and we we're sitting there brainstorming, and she jumped in and started doing that. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I was thrilled. I was thrilled. I was like, "That is that is amazing. That's awesome. It, it just looks phenomenal." I didn't... And is that with chocolate? It's a ganache. Yeah. Oh, ganache. Yeah. She just took one of the ends of her paintbrushes, and the the hard end, and started. Just drawing right into the ganache and did all these squirrels. And it just went so well. I thought Very it was beautiful. Cool. It was a beautiful finish to the piece. So and how did, you, how did you decide on the, the shape of that base? Was that intended for structural purposes? or? It was more structural. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want it wobbling in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so it's, that's a real big, thick piece of wood, too. So it ended up being really nice. And, and working out great. And plus, I really like the curve and the shape of it. It's not typical. Uh huh. I think it added to some of the character of the overall piece. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you can see that you know you've got the the shape of her, everything, her hair, even, and you know, I I just am blown away by the the detail that you know that that goes into this. And you know, I love how it even looks like a you know, like the hammered metal kind of look. That's what I, is what well, I imagine. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's awesome you say that. I mean, that, that's always my goal is to make it look like a sculpture. I mean, that's what it is. You know, I just happen to be using edible ingredients, but it really is a real, true sculpture. It's very cool. All right, so you guys can see the final product. There's another angle, and her, the braid in her hair and everything. Awesome. Yeah, the braid was fun. <laughs> Everyone started freaking out when I, when, I, when I got the braid in there. So, <laughs> it was fun. It was one of the last things that I did. And everybody was wondering and wondering, wondering how am I going to do her hair. It was, actually, uh -huh. it was actually pretty straightforward. It was just a couple of strands of, I just rolled out some Molly and chocolate, put it together like a braid and then twisted it uh -huh. and then pulled it so the, the top was thicker and the bottom was thinner and placed it on the head portion, and boom, it was there. And then hung it off. You can see where it's it's hanging off her uh, her shoulder, uh -huh. just like it actually is in real life. <laughs> that is spectacular. And to see how you know the support that's inside of her is is so amazingly planned out because you it looks like the front of her is so much heavier, and that she's just going to topple over. It, so you you clearly had to think ahead on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really, and also when you make these armatures, the other hard part is you can't be off an inch, and, and you can see if you're if you're off an inch here or there, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So and again, that's when the engineering meets the artist, and you've really got to combine both of those skills to be able to pull this off. Yeah. So, uh, did you take any you know engineering type of classes or or? Or anything nope. like that, or just really. <laughs> no, nope. I, I I work with a, a great guy, David, and he's a carpenter, and he helps me out. So uh -huh. basically, I go to him and we sit down. We'll go over the plan. I'll give him the measurements, and I'll draw out everything, and he cuts everything out for me, and then we start to build it, and then we'll start making adjustments. And I'll like you know cut off cut off half an inch here. I mean, I can tell you right now that I don't think I've ever built an armature where it didn't need adjustments afterwards. It always needs adjustments based on, you just have to stand back and visualize it finished. Mm -hmm. And you look at a, a shoulder piece, like I cut out a little bit of a shoulder and like, you know what, that's not going to work. You, you got to cut the shoulder and, and make adjustments. And it's kind of, it's kind of hard to understand, but once you go through the process, it's just tweaking, and you just got to get it just right. And again, guess if that armature is not perfect, you're not going to have a good day. <laughs> yeah. Know? 
Yeah. Well, that's good to hear that you know you do some a lot of times have to adjust things because you know for those of us that are especially those of us that are new to 3D sculpting and that type of a thing to to know that you know it, it's not going to be perfect the the first time you get it put together that you know you do have to make those adjustments and you do have to change you do, things yeah. up. Yeah, don't be shy. You know, just because the armature didn't come out, if if you if your mind's saying cut it, cut it. <laughs> you know, go with your instinct. And awesome. you know, I know this this piece is really big, but you could scale it down and do the same thing, and it's, it'd be a lot easier actually because you don't have to worry about the the physics and the engineering yeah. behind having All to hold weight. up eight pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if, let's say you do a small version of this and it weighed ten pounds, uh, you can. Mm -hmm. It much easier. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm sure. And very doable for uh, you know, someone that's never tried something quite this huge. <laughs> awesome. Well, it is spectacular, and you know, I I don't know if anyone would ever try to attempt something so life size and huge. But you can do this smaller scale and use the same <laughs> the same general rules. Okay, uh, yep. and then. And then you're cutting the cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had to get a, uh, yeah, an image of it so you can actually see the cake portion. Prove that it's cake, right? Exactly. <laughs> Prove that it's cake. But again, in this case, her whole torso from her shoulders all the way down to the butt <laughs> was all, was all uh, chocolate cake with raspberry preserves and chocolate ganache. Very cool. That looks looks delicious. I'm sure it tasted delicious. <laughs> I really I put a huge effort into how it tastes as well. It's not just about how it looks. It's, not, it's just for everybody here. You know, everyone puts so much passion in what they're doing, not just the way it looks, but people want to be able to eat it and enjoy it. <laughs> you know, it's got to taste yeah. great. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you were talking a little bit at, at, at the beginning about flavoring. So, what kinds of flavorings do you add to your chocolate? And and is it, a, you know, if you add moisture to chocolate, it seizes. Is this stuff that you just add to modeling chocolate nope. or to actual chocolate? And and how is it? Yeah, I don't think I'd add, ever add it to the modeling chocolate, but I do add it to ganache. Okay. And they're oil based. Uh huh. So I buy them at a local store, D and G occasions. I know they've got an online store. And they're these little vials of flavor, high quality, all kinds of different flavors. You know, raspberry, orange, and really anything you can think of. Do you have a favorite? I really like raspberry. Yeah, I just think raspberry and chocolate go so well together. Yeah. And awesome. They, yeah, they complement. And then another trick that I do is uh, I put a little bit of salt. I love Himalayan pink salt. And I'll put a little mm -hmm. salt in my ganache, and wow. <laughs> salt, I mean, wow. salt and good salt make such a huge difference to, right. to desserts. You do not want to use table salt. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it would, I guess it would add a little bit, but the Himalayan pink salt or a good quality real um, sea salt is going to mm -hmm. make all the difference in the flavoring of your chocolate. And it really does. It's amazing. You guys need to try it. I mean, awesome. It just, it, gives it a whole nother level of deliciousness. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, it's like a salted caramel or caramel, I guess. It, you know, it just adds such a different dimension and uh, all the difference. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's get on to our questions. I know we have a bunch of them. So um, for those of you that are wanting to ask Paul a question and might have missed that part, um, down below this screen there is a box that says ask a question. So go ahead and type in your questions there. If you don't see that screen, go ahead and refresh your page. It should be there for everybody. But if not, just refresh your page and it will be there. Yeah, I, just to let you know, I don't see the... Uh, oh, yeah, um, it, we're, we're on a different screen than everybody okay. else. I should have told you that at the beginning. <laughs> so, cool. I, yeah, I'll ask the questions for, uh, for them. Okay. Uh, let's see, our first question uh, was... Uh, where, where did it go? Okay. Um, our climate is very humid. I would like to know the ganache recipe for cake frosting, which will not be sticky. Mm -hmm. 
So. Hmm. Well, they. I'm from Florida, so I've got lots of humidity. <laughs> um, I mean, the the ganache recipe. Let me see. Hold on one second here. So I, I, I make I, mean, I make huge amounts. <laughs> so I don't know how it would translate into something that's a little bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. um, but I use 120 ounces of chocolate, the 10 and a half cups of cream. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one of my batches, and I, I usually make several of those <laughs> for for what I'm doing. So yeah, that is well, a lot. For something that massive, you would need to. Right, but you can you can definitely scale that down, but again, it's 120 ounces, to ten and a half cups. So okay. I know that's one, but. <laughs> okay, so probably about 12 ounces per cup, if I if my ratios are right. Yeah, eight. It would be eight. Let's see, let me get my calculator out. <laughs> eight times 10.5. Oops. 84 ounces of cream okay. to 120 ounces of chocolate. So you can see that the cream to chocolate ratio, there's a little bit more chocolate. And I do that because I need it for structural purposes, and it hardens up really nice. So what's amazing about the ganache recipe is that when it does harden up, it doesn't get hard. It's really pleasant to eat. And that that's the balance is you want it really amazing to eat, but at the same time you want it to be able to sculpt with it too. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, uh, here's someone asking about uh, whipped cream. Do you know much about whipped cream? I, mean, I, I make whipped cream for fun. <laughs> <laughs> someone's asking about, the question is, how do you make whipped cream not melt as soon as it gets to room temperature? I tried gelatin, but after two days, it tastes funny. Hmm. Well, when I bake my whipped cream, uh, put it in my my KitchenAid, and it's just cream, heavy cream, and sugar. And the the trick is to be able to whip it up to that that right consistency. Because if you over whip it, it'll dry it out, and you you just won't get and it won't be pleasant to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, what that person might be doing. And sorry, I, I can't see their name, but um, they may not be. Vicky, it. sorry about okay, that. Vicky. <laughs> you may not be. Uh, you may not be whipping it long enough, and then after you whip it, go ahead and put it into the refrigerator, and that'll definitely help it set. Yeah. And after a while, of course, it is going to melt outside. Yeah. On yeah. One thing I'd like to add is um, it. Thing, the thing about whipping cream is that it, it doesn't last for very long. It, you know, it, it's not going to last forever. It'll last, it'll last a little while, but it won't last forever. And then it, she, you did say it, after two days it tastes funny. Um, that, that, I would say, is probably just uh, take, cream takes on, or fat, takes on the taste of whatever it's around. And right. so, so you, you know, if you've got it in you know, kind of a funky smelling room or or if you've got other things in your refrigerator, you know, that you know, more savory smells or something, it's it's going to take it's gonna take on everything that Yeah, that's a good point. And chocolate does the same thing. Yeah. Chocolate will take on whatever yep, yeah, what whatever smells are around it, it's gonna take it on. Yeah, it's it's that fat content that's that's there. It just soaks everything in. So Okay, we have a fun question here. Elizabeth Merrick. Hi, Elizabeth. Hey, <laughs> she's she's one of our cake foo masters. <laughs> uh, she says, "What is your favorite part about working with chocolate?" Chocolate is amazing. <laughs> um, wow, I mean that's a, I mean chocolate is just you can you can play with it. It tastes amazing. Uh, you get your hands dirty. It tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's smooth. It tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just can't come up with a better medium than chocolate. You can sculpt with it. You can eat it. I mean, what else do you want? It's it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it is, isn't it? You know, you it get is. <laughs> you get the artistic side of being able to you know sculpt and and do all that you know 
beautiful stuff. And then, you, and then it tastes so good. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm terrible with names sometimes. I'm sorry. I think it's Rocio, I think, says, Are the arms made of cake too? How do you support the cake on the arms or any place like that? Thank you. Yeah, in this case, there is just chocolate on the arms. The cake portion is just in the torso. So yeah, I wouldn't imagine you could get very much cake into an arm anyway because of how thin, you know, it is. You'd have to use uh, MDF wood. You, you wouldn't be able. You really wouldn't be able to practically do that with uh, with the PVC. Mm -hmm. There'd it be nothing to lay the cake on. Yeah. So, but, but in theory, you could do you could do the arms, cut them out, and MDF wood, put chocolate underneath to be able to get the anatomy right, and then cake on top. That'd be one way to doing it. That'd be hard, though. <laughs> that would be really hard, and especially with the weight of it and everything. Worry about that MDF breaking, or you know. That yeah, I mean, tough. in terms of, the, I've never had an MDF piece break. That would be horrifying. <laughs> but as long, yeah. as long as you're using the, it comes in different thicknesses. So as long as you're using the proper thickness, it should never break. Okay. Okay. All right. So, but if you're you're probably more you're better off just uh, sculpting it out of chocolate and not worrying about the cake in, in that portion. I would agree, so. definitely. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, do you ever use uh, black iron pipe or copper for structures? If not, why? My name's Tracy. Okay, hey Tracy. Um, I just use PVC, and it's a really simple answer is it's cheap. <laughs> And it's easily accessible. I mean, you can just run down to Home Depot. I think they're open to like 10 o'clock, some crazy hours, and they open up at 6. And so you can just jump in the car, go down there two minutes away, and you can get the PVC. And I do agree that uh, some more rigid pipe would be beneficial, but I just, I just, I haven't tried that. And again, it's just because PVC is what I taught myself to do, and it's e so easily accessible and it's easy to cut as well with the copper. I can't imagine that being nearly as easy as PVC. You can use just normal hand tools to be able to cut that PVC. And the copper, I think you'd need something more industrial. Mm -hmm. But maybe not. I haven't done it before. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah, um, I have actually used the, the pipe before uh, for holding up the, things. The it, copper? Yeah, it works. It works well, um, and you can use flanges to you know to screw right, into right. the wood and, and all of that. And it, it, it's a really good support system. You might you need to make sure that you you know cover it properly because it is not food safe at all. So yeah. you know cover it with a saran wrap and then you know maybe some you know modeling chocolate. Or I mean ganache, or and you know, and then some freezer paper. You know, just make sure it's really well covered because that's right. that's the last thing you want to do is is contaminate a cake. <laughs> uh, it's so the same, real quick, the same thing with PVC is uh, yeah. PVC is not food safe. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you so have to make sure that anything's going to be eaten is covered. Yeah, very very good point. Um, and then. Uh, the one, the one downside and and a benefit to PVC, I'm seeing, is that you know you can make those adjustments if you need to. If you're using the pipe, when once it's cut, that's it. You know, so the the adjustments can't be made in the in the final product. So, so yeah. And yeah. One I, interesting I, thing is uh, I don't use the flange with because you can do the flange um, technique with the PVC as well. But I always, I always use L brackets. Do you just you, find it's more sturdy? It's not necessarily more sturdy. It's, it gives me more flexibility. And I don't mean the flex in the PVC, but what I could do is I could cut the PVC at an angle. And then with the L brackets, I can brace it, and I can have a nice angle going for the PVC. With the flange, you can't do that. It's got to be straight mm -hmm. up and down. So that, that's a big benefit to using the, the L brackets over the flange. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, here's a question from Lisa Fitch. 
She says the upper thigh portion PVC appears to be floating over the lower leg PVC. How is that attra attached for strength and structure? So the leg that's in the air? I think it's. I think she's talking about the the lower leg, the how there's the the wider PVC. It looks right. it looks as if it's just kind of floating there. Is it really structurally supporting that PVC? And oh yeah, and definitely. If so, how? Yeah. It's it's attached just like we've been talking about. It's attached with those L brackets. So I use L brackets and real specific eight inch. It's called number eight screws. <laughs> so. I think they're half-inch number eight screws that I use. Okay, and, and they're and you've bracketed them into like on onto the MDF. Correct. Yeah. So okay. one one half of that L bracket will be into the MDF, and the other half will be into the PVC itself. Okay. And does it actually uh, connect to the the longer skinnier PVC? The longer skinnier PVC, we I think what I did was I put in a long screw, like a two-inch screw. So it went right through the, the wide portion into the, the narrow portion. Oh, okay. Great. And that gave it extra structure, extra strength. Perfect. Okay. Um. <laughs> Someone asked, uh, what happened to this hard work after delivered? And that's one yeah. thing. You don't really deliver it. You make it on site, right? Right. And right. then she said, did it end up in the trash? <laughs> Well, they eat it. <laughs> yeah, you eat it. You eat it. It's chocolate. <laughs> they, they did serve it uh, towards the end of the party, and uh, but after that, you still have this structure, and it's they always ask for help. Like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> you know, how, how do we get this out of the house? So I, I always have to like brainstorm and figure out exactly because I, I do leave it there. I don't take it with me, so I do I do leave it at the party. And I, awesome. I let the customer take care of disposing whatever's left. <laughs> Very great. Okay, so uh, the next question is, uh, what do you use to cut the big pieces of PVC? Um, oh, what is it called? Again, I, I, I use my friend Dave's stuff. <laughs> um, it's one of those saws. It's table saw. So. Oh, okay. Or it's... Uh, Boy, I guess a table saw is one of those ones that you, you, you push it, but uh -huh. it's a handle, and you go, you go like this. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize for my, uh, my poor knowledge of yeah. power. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about, but I, I, I'm the same way. I know what a table saw is, but that, that one that has the lever, I, I don't know. Right, it's got that lever. And yeah. It down, and it, it's just big enough to be able to do the four-inch. Uh-huh. It's actually it's one of those things where you have to cut one half, turn it, turn and then it, cut, cut the other half. half. Okay. All right. Okay. This is a an interesting question. Uh, Jean Ann says, "Every time I use preserves, my cake gets soggy. That would be a disaster in a sculpture. What do you do to keep that from happening?" I'm not sure why the cake's getting soggy. I don't know what type of preserve she's using, so uh, I, I just I, I use I would say about quarter inch of preserves, and then I let the, I let it set. So I'll have my my sheet cake. I'll cover it in preserves. I'll put it in the refrigerator, and I'll let it set. And then I go over that with a layer of ganache. I say about another quarter inch or more. The the ganache is always going to be a little bit thicker than the preserve layer. And I find it, it works really great. I, and I'm not quite sure why um, it would get to. Uh, I guess the bottom line, with with to answer your question, is it's the ganache. The, the the ganache is creating that structure. Mm -hmm. going, that ganache is going to be between the layers, that's filling, and then it's going to be on the outside as well. And that, okay. that, that ganache recipe hardens up to that perfect consistency to where it's going to give it structure, but yeah, it's it's still really great to eat. Perfect. Okay, and if you if you're using a really uh, soft preserve, you could. I I'm pretty sure I've done this before. You add a little bit of gelatin to it, make it you know a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more solid, so it's not liquid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gel gelatin would work. I could see that. You just have to be uh, careful. 
Yeah, you don't want to add too much. And, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, here's a very good question from Jolene. She says, what are some key things to look for when trying to shop for high-quality chocolate? I would look at the ingredients, and you just want the basic, basic ingredients. You just want cocoa, cocoa butter, sugar, and most chocolates are going to have soy lecithin and vanilla, and that's about it. I mean, there shouldn't be anything else in it besides those ingredients that I just listed. Okay. So look for good ingredients or lack of Definitely. extra ingredients. <laughs> right. And then something else that's important to me and important to a lot of people is uh, fair trade. So if it says chocolate has a problem with uh, just the, the business of chocolate, uh, can get uh, a little bit unethical and if you look for chocolate that's fair trade it, it, it definitely gives you a much better opportunity to make sure that the people that are harvesting the chocolate and that are they're getting fair wages and it's a real good thing to do so look for that fair trade label yeah that's something that you know it, some people don't really take into account but it it is important it is, yeah. So the chocolate that I use is, is, is fair trade. Davis chocolate is fair trade. Perfect. It's that bean, the bean. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Someone says, Paul, do you ever get a piece of the cake? <laughs> and just wondering if you ever had one tipping, uh, what balancing tricks do you use? If I ever had a cake. Well, occasionally I eat the cake, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as cakers were surrounded by cake all the time, so, and I've had it so many times, yeah, once in a while I like to mix it up a little bit, just so I'm not making the same cake over and over and over again, but I, I know my clients like this, like one recipe so much, it, it's hard to vary from what everyone loves, but yeah, I will occasionally, but not, not a whole lot. <laughs> um, in terms of tipping, I, I got to be honest with you. If it's tipping, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're doing this live and it's tipping, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Mm -hmm. You just you just make sure it doesn't happen. I mean, I've had a few cake disasters in the past. It's been a long time, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four years ago, I think it was four years ago, I made a cake for my sister, and uh, I didn't really know what I was doing yet, and I didn't I didn't refrigerate it. And I used buttercream. I'm not a buttercream master by any means. And I used buttercream instead of the chocolate ganache that I've been talking about all day. And I, it was for her 40th birthday. I made her a wheelchair cake. So let's just say that uh, it, it looked like a wheelchair that had crashed <laughs> by the time we got there. And it, there wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. It, it, it was a four-hour drive. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Unrefrigerated four-hour drive. Yikes. Oh, no. <laughs> and again, I'm here in Florida, so it, it didn't. But hey, it worked out great. It tasted amazing. And everyone thought I did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, so hey, you know, you just, you just got to make the best of it. Yep, that's true. You, you just, oh, gosh. Those, you, work those with, yeah, you work with the elements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are. Okay, we're going to only be able to take one more question, but I think this is a pretty good one. Um, okay. Diane Holgate says, does, hey, your Diane. Modeling, does your modeling chocolate get greasy when you make it, and do you knead it in or wipe it off, and do you use any of the colored confectioner coatings? Okay, that's a really good question. If you overheat the chocolate, the cocoa butter will start to seep out, and mm -hmm. it's really important to, to reincorporate that. So if that, that oily cocoa butter it gets on the, on the top, you just need to let it set. So what I'll, you don't want to discard it because you'll, you'll lose a lot of that butter and that mm -hmm. moisture and you don't want that to happen because your, your, your buying chocolate will, will become brittle and you definitely don't want that. So again, what, what I'll do is um, I'll knead it and yeah, it'll get all of your hands and everywhere, but I'll knead it and let it sit. And then if you want to accelerate the process, you could put it in the refrigerator or the freezer, but it gets a little more technical once you do that. I would just leave it out in room temperature and okay. let it sit, and you'll notice that it'll change, it'll change, the tone of it will change, and you'll notice that 
kind of melting together and hardening up. And once it hardens up, you can re-knead it, and you'll be fine. You might have to do it twice, but it's doable. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> it is it is fixable. So to avoid that, though, don't overheat your chocolate. It's, it's all about saying. it's all about the heat. If you overheat the chocolate, it, it starts to separate, and you'll get that white cocoa butter separating from the chocolate. Okay, but if it does separate, it, that's not the end of it. You can need. It's it not the way. end. Yeah, you can definitely okay. reincorporate it. It's just okay. a pain. All right, and then the other half of her question was, do you use any of the colored confectioner coatings? I did this past week. <laughs> I don't normally, um, but I, I didn't have any white chocolate colored ready to go, and all mm -hmm. I had was the, the, the CK. And uh, don't ask me what the recipe was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just asked some, um, I think Sarah Myers gave me a great answer. And she told me what, what to do, and um, a, a couple other great cakers chimed in as well. I just posted to Facebook and said, what's the recipe? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, I, I'm not crazy about it. It's, the, it melts differently, and I, I find it much more difficult to use okay. than, the, 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 than the real deal, than the real chocolate, including the, the white chocolate. I, I think it's a lot easier to be able to take the colors and incorporate that into white chocolate versus the dark. Um, I'm sorry, versus the uh, confession. Confectioner's coding, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, well, that was a lot of really good information. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank okay. you. And so for those of you that are, are wondering about uh, Paul and what's coming up with him, uh, let's see, June 6th is Raw, which is, I he sent me a link to it, which was really cool. Um, I didn't get that up on here, but it's basically a bunch of, uh, artists that get together, uh, di all different fields of artistry, and and do, you know, a big get yeah, together. Big thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like a it's like a it's like a party. That's awesome. <laughs> it really is. It's all different mediums. It's it's fashion designers and musicians, and painters and you know miscellaneous people like me and you know all getting together, and and just having fun and inviting your friends and and having a great night. That is really cool. That's that's a neat neat concept. I really do like that. And a good way to you know get out there some more. Um, and then on June eighth, you have a local TV uh, appearance that you're going to be doing. Yeah, I'm going to be on a, a local news segment, and I'll be yeah. announcing that the day before. So next the Friday, day. I'll be able to announce who I'm doing it for and and, and when and where. Okay, and you, you're going to announce that on like your Facebook or your website or where's on, that? on Facebook, so facebook.com slash art edibles. Okay, and then uh, let's see, Bush Gardens in June, on yeah. June 21st, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm that's really, really great, cool. That's going gonna, that's gonna to be fantastic. Yeah, food, and, food festival, that, that's going to be really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, great, I've got three days to scope, so it should be fun. Oh wow, cool, very cool. And then uh, sometime in July or August, there will be an, a national television appearance. Sorry, I have to be a little bit vague about it, but <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to say the network, and I'm not allowed to say the, the show either. Uh, okay. But but I will be on national TV again over the summer. And what's interesting about it is it is not a food show. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. So it's totally, it's something completely different. It was fun. I'm uh, intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm so, sure you'll be announcing this on your, on, on your Facebook be. page as well. So, Definitely. yeah, if you want to keep up with Paul and everything that's going on with him, you can find his website, artedibles.com. You can find it on, or find him on his Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash artedibles, or Twitter, um, or I guess it would be Art Edibles on Twitter as well. So, so great. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for for coming and joining us and doing this. Uh, well, thank you. So we're so glad to be able to get a little bit of uh, your expertise and your knowledge. You definitely have a lot to, you know, a lot in that brain of yours. <laughs> we're yeah, glad to get fun. a little bit of it. Well, I, I appreciate you building this platform and allowing us to be able to share and it's awesome. So, well, thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. Thanks, 
Thanks, everyone, for coming. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for, you know, just this is really fun. So uh, I guess we will uh, see you guys all next time. Okay. Okay, bye. bye.